Hello, and welcome to This Week in Frax. I'm Sam, and I'm joined by DeFi Dave. It is, Hello. yeah. It Hello. Is. <laughs> Today is May 11th, and uh, we're going to get to the kind of down news a little bit. Well, actually, it's May 12th. Oh, it's, it is May 12th. We're, we're recording this on the 11th. It'll be out on the 12th. Um, hopefully, the price of Frax shares has recovered by tomorrow, because today is one of the... Uh, most like how do it says uh most negative days by percentage that we've had in the past year um, i can pull up my chart that i made the other day or just today and you can see that the uh this little bar over here is about 13 percent, and so this is pretty far down there's only been about seven or eight other days in the past year where we've had this negative of price uh for frac shares so I uh, hate to see it, but where did these sellers come from? I don't even know because it, this has been like a multi, this has been like a week long move, right? So we've had one yesterday was flat, right? So we had uh, minus 13 today. The other day was minus one and then minus 10, minus one, minus seven, minus eight. And then there was like one day of positive in the last few days. So mm -hmm. not that great. Um, even so, after like the MEV spikes for L for Frax ETH, even after the MEV spikes, maybe it's because of the um, the return to 100% CR. Uh, this is what I've been thinking about: is that that was uh, a lot of uh, buy pressure that would normally go towards buying Frax shares and giving it back to um, uh, to VFXS, right? And so you would have $3 million now, up to $3 million, which is now being used to get us back to the peg. And uh, so now that we don't have that, uh, there's less less pressure to support the price. Uh, okay. Potentially. Right. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong, but uh, there's been a whole heck of a lot of selling <laughs> in the past like past month. The past month has been like just down only. I mean, it happens. It's the nature of the game. Um but if anything, FXS is undervalued. And I believe to uh, kick this off, we had Sam talking about yes, we did. potential buybacks. Can we go into that? Yeah, sure. So uh, on, I think it was today or maybe yesterday, or sorry, this is Thursday. So on Wednesday, uh, a user by the name of Luffy Monkey came into chat and said, Dear Sam, the price of frac shares is still inflating. So it's still being distributed uh, after two years. And the number of users keeps growing. Do you think that the, the letting the ratio of rewards to burning uh, should be something like 70 to 30 rather than giving 100% of rewards to VFXS? So we used to burn, I think, 50% of the... It was 50-50. Yeah. yeah, it was 50-50. And uh, that was voted out. We had a vote for that way back when. And Sam said, yeah. He says, you know, if the price of frac shares keeps being as undervalued as it is now, I, he says that he does think it's a good idea to restart the buybacks and then uh, burn potentially based on how much frac shares was bought back. And if frac shares become so undervalued compared to the other assets that can be held in the treasury, the best use of revenue is to buy back rather than to buy other assets. So, uh, you know, he's he's obviously watching frac shares price as well, too, because it does have an effect on the collateral ratio uh, until we hit 100 percent. And uh, yeah, so he's he's also thinking about like what this means in relation to like Ethereum's EIP one one or one five five nine, and if we can make this like autonomous, right? Um, and you know what that what that buyback is going to look like. I mean, we do have eighteen million dollars left mm -hmm. in the arsenal to do something like this. So you know, I would not be surprised if it gets low enough that you know at least two million gets deployed like it was almost a year ago yeah so sam it ended, ended it off with um so we used to have fxs 1559 and you know people that have been in the community for a long time remember that uh, but it was deprecated he says we should bring it back with a new algorithm and burn a ton of fractures which i kind of agree mm -hmm. yeah i think it's worth trying out and worth bringing back back especially if you know Frax is going back up to 100% clutter ratio. Makes sense to bring something like that back, you know, to uh, help per se. 
Well, I guess this is the question is like, where does frat, what's the point of fractures outside of fracs once we get back to 100% collateral ratio? So if fractures is no longer backing fracs, it, is, it is it just a token that uh, you hold and accrues value? I, like th these are questions that'll have to be. Well, when frac chain comes out, it seems like it'll be an essential part of frac chain. <laughs> but I, you know, this brings in the questions of if if frac shares is is almost like a, a just a cruise value through the profits that the uh, protocol is making. Um, should we do buybacks or should we distribute the, that revenue in the form of like more frac shares or fracs or or frac ETH? You say or frac ETH? Yeah. Um, so if it's not needed to mint fracs anymore, like where what what where should it stand and what should we use it for? I believe Sam talks about using, uh, like letting VE FXS stakers uh, access interest, zero interest loans or like loan discounts and loan privileges. Uh, if they like stake their frac, frac shares long enough. He did that mention would, that in the chat. That would be nice. That would be nice. Um, it would be nice if you could. Uh, use your VFXS as like a, a subsidy for Frax chain eventually where you don't have to pay any gas fees, but who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? So <clears throat> speaking of Frax ETH, the yields have jumped back up above 8% now, now that the new epoch has started. I'd like to see it. We're number one again. I mean, we were number one. It just took it some time for it to update. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's the projected. Sorry, I'm. I, I got that wrong. Uh, yields are almost ten percent now. They're ten percent. Yeah, I got it. We're right. in the double digits. I was looking at the projected stake stress stake frax ETH APR for the next epoch, and uh, that's going to be eight uh, percent. And in the current one, it's nine point nine three percent that DeFi Llama is showing. You love to see it. Mm -hmm. Truly, the best system. Yeah. Um. And. Yeah, so we're we're slowly climbing up to 100% collateral ratio. Uh, you should follow us on Frax Check every Tuesday. And we just see that go up and up, just yeah. being number one in every single category. Yeah. And someone who's interested in Frax shares that uh, bought actually just today is the Time Wonderland dev and former Quadriga co-founder Sifu, aka Michael uh, Patron, was discovered to have bought $250,000 of Frax share. Somebody thinks it's undervalued. Yes, yeah, somebody does. I also saw some of the bear chain people buying. Um, and oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I always try to like watch some of the bigger bigger buys for those wallets. Like sometimes they have an ENS name attached to it. Was it Smoky or was it Papa? No, it was like Panda Bera. I don't know Panda Bera. <clears throat> well, uh, I guess he's one of them. Um, but uh, maybe that's what we should do. Like, so I'm looking at the last one. Vita Brevis .eth. A lot of people are buying frac shares. Um, bullish. Very bullish. We should probably dig through the, the Dex trades more to find out who exactly is doing what. It'd be nice if they showed the ENS names for, for the Dex trading, though, which they don't. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then moving on to some governance stuff. Antheus wants to build a liquidation dash dashboard for Fraxlin. So this is going up in FIP to 226. Don't we already have a liquidation dashboard? We do, we do. But Antheus is proposing uh, also to build a, a liquidation dashboard uh, that, that is going to follow Fraxlin. And it's going to help them manage their liquidation cascade risk. So if you should know like who's in front of you and what's going to happen, like how much that price is going to move in case they get liquidated. How so, much are they asking for? Um, let me pull that up. So they are asking for, I believe it was 15,000. Um, so they're asking for 17,000 and 500 goes to database storage, 50 for server hosting, 450 for nodes, and then $16,000 to pay the devs uh, to do this. And uh, Charlie Ambrose, who is one of, who posted the FIP and is part of the project came and did a little FAQ about what this is going to be different and or sorry how this is going to be different from frax facts and uh so they're already working with euler well what used to be euler compound ave 
and they're not building a competitor, but uh, they're going to be focusing on this one particular thing, which is liquidation risk. So uh, if there's people ahead of you who uh, can be liquidated, uh, if they are liquidated, you have to take that into account of what that can do to the price. So if the price is selling off really fast um, and somebody ahead of you gets liquidated, it could cause a, a cascade of price, which could, uh, you know, like essentially put you into liquidation. Uh, you, just as the price wicks down and people are selling the asset. Um, so that's what they want to build. Speaking of liquidations, did you, so is it like the line at 550 for FXS right now? Uh, I can take a, let's take a look at fax.frax. You know, the thing is, is most people have been, have been selling and, and uh, re-collateralizing re -collateralizing their positions uh, as the, uh, as it comes down. So uh, I'm just looking at the LTV right now. Uh, there's a couple of people who are very close. So I see a couple of 1,000 uh, fractures positions. It's starting One, to move. 1,000 FXS? Yeah, 1,000 FXS about to be liquidated. He's at 74.91%. Oh Jesus! I know. If you <laughs> if you're watching this, go check your position right now. We do not want to see you liquidated. Yeah, we, we so want to see you winning. We want to see you winning. Uh, and you know the the biggest the biggest position that I can see. Uh, actually, there's a quite a few positions that are that are very close. Uh, these positions cumulatively probably have around. Uh, so within 5% of L, like LTV, right? So within an, probably 50 cents, uh, you probably have $300,000 worth of fracs borrowed. Uh, so there is significant amount of frac shares at risk. It should definitely be de deleveraging. We've just had a couple of liquidations. So oh my uh, God. yeah, one minute ago, we had 5,000 FXS liquidated. 5,000? 5,000. 5,000? 5,000. 5,000. Yes. Um, and uh, three hours ago, someone got liquidated for 11,000 CRV. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I know. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, prices are in free fall, guys. You better clean up your positions. <laughs> wow. Uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about for liquidations in frac share or in the frac check coming up. I'm seeing since the last time that we, that we spoke. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten already, with potentially a bunch more coming. That's a lot moment of money. Of, yeah. moment. Let's give a moment of silence for all the DGens right now. I know. I know. That's why I don't. That's why I don't use leverage. Yeah, or just you know, if you if you borrow money from frac shares, like use it to farm. It may, use it to make more than whatever you borrow it for. So be ready to pay back at a moment's notice. Um, but wow, we, we're, we're just fractures is in total free fall. I don't know what's going to stop it, but you know, maybe we're going to $4 again. <laughs> I'm, I'm in pain. I know. I'm in, uh... <laughs> we all are Dave. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. It's literally, it's what's, what's like painful about it. It's not like a sudden drop. Mm -hmm. It's like a, like an analog, like low staircase down. Um, it's very uh, 20th century price action. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it comes and goes, you know, we know how this is. I'm really, I mean, if anything, like it is undervalued. There's a lot of stuff coming. Um, V3, any like V3 is coming. More Frax and pairs, you said. Frax Heath V2, which sounds very interesting. And uh, bam, bam. Which sounds like it can take Fraxlin to the next level. So, yeah, I mean, my long term kind of Fraxeth uh, uh, like supply assumptions are that Fraxeth is probably going to be somewhere between five to seven million dollars, or sorry, five to seven million ETH converted into Fraxeth, um, which would yeah. be pretty significant. And just based on that, that would add about thirty-five to fifty million dollars a year in in uh, revenue at these prices where ETH is right now. Assuming we ETH doesn't grow at all, uh, 
that we that we could use for incentives and buybacks and just other things within the protocol. And you know, if if we directed all of that, I mean, how much how much loan how much should frac shares be worth if you have a fifty million dollar a year income uh, coming through there? I think a lot more more than we are now. But I guess the market disagrees. Yeah. Yeah. What else do we have on the agenda? So Drake said today in chat that he's testing in prod some new Fraxlin pairs. Potentially, this is that uh, Fraxeth ETH LP uh, that is going to be added, potentially. Is it Maybe. on Arbitrum? I don't know. That's what I thought. It would be great to have some Arbitrum pairs. Is it the uh, Convex LP pairs? I would yeah, Probably, because that was what we found last week, wasn't it? Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, and then also Binance LP or sorry, Binance ETH uh, has been making some huge strides over the past week. I believe they've acquired uh, 500,000 ETH in one week, which is crazy because we're, we haven't even been able to get 500,000 ETH. Uh, but Binance got it. Did they just buy it? I, I don't know. Maybe they just have it in their holdings or something and or they have a lot of friends who want to stake through Binance. But uh, and they're bribing, right? Aren't they bribing? I think so. I think so. And uh, this brought was brought up in chat um, about someone asks like Frax Binance bribe next round, and uh, he wants to talk with the the Binance team about it. He thinks that it'd be a really great addition for the uh, Frax ETH pairs, and also the the Frax the Weth replacement program. And hopefully we do see some Binance Frax ETH bribes coming. I hope so too. Yeah. I mean, I, I find this extremely bullish uh, curve and convex and Frax because like now you have a big player like Binance playing the curve game, like mm -hmm. coming, coming to the chain to step onto the field and play. Yeah. Like we've been waiting for this. When, when Coinbase is going to do that? Well, we, there already is a Coinbase pair. For... I mean, is Coinbase ever going to bribe? Oh, wait, no, there is no Coinbase pair. I thought there was a Coinbase pair for Fraxeth. Apparently not. Huh, interesting. Well, that would be great to have a Fraxeth Coinbase pair. Maybe it just needs to be added to the through curve mm -hmm. uh, to get a gauge. But does Coinbase ETH even, Coinbase ETH even on? Uh, no, Coinbase ETH isn't even on um, uh, curve. Mm. Oh, sorry. No, there is. Uh, I'm I'm wrong. Sorry. There's there is a Coinbase ETH Frax ETH pair. Uh, it's yielding 11.51 percent with CRV incentives, and it's got 2.8 million dollars worth of uh, TVL. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. So potentially, there's going to be a stake Frax ETH Frax ETH. Uh, pair on Fraxlin. Sam thinks it's a possibility. Um, but governance would have to approve that. That would only make sense. Yeah, it does. I think with the size of the Frax ETH, ETH pool now, uh, it definitely is a possibility. Yeah, I can definitely support it. Yeah. Uh, somebody just needs to rep propose it. <laughs> Someone with a good amount of frac the state Frax ETH. Um, I wonder if we could get a gauge. I would support a gauge for that. I'm I don't know. They, it seems like the Fraxeth gauge train has uh, returned to the station. You mean, well, hold on. The, okay, so this would be stake Fraxeth as collateral and then borrowing Fraxeth as, uh, as um, what's it Would called? it be the, the lending side or borrow side? You would, you would incentivize the lending. You would create a gauge for the uh, borrow, for the, sorry, for the, the people who are providing the Fraxy to borrow. Yeah, that, I mean, possibly, but I believe uh, it was discussed that, you know, FXS should only be used from now on for Frax, not just like kind of cut back on the Frax ETH incentives. Yeah. But I'm, I'm open I'm open to Frax, more Frax ETH incentives. I understand. Like, honestly, what I really want to see is a, a very high LTV, uh, like a 95% LTV uh, pool for uh, Stake Frax ETH as collateral and then Steth as the lending pair. 
<laughs> borrow instead. Yeah, because then you could do essentially an interest rate swap where you say like, okay, um, I want to, uh, I want to stake my, I want to use my stake for ETH as collateral, and then I want to borrow Steth. So like, I'm making eight percent with stake for ETH, and then I'm borrowing Steth, which is rebasing. At, yeah, well, which was Steth, which has like a a six percent interest rate, right? So now I can loop that like with it with the high LTV of like 95%. Now I can loop that to like 10 or 15 X or even 20 X. Um, and I can, I can uh, play the interest rate differential game where now I'm, I'm um, I turn that 2% spread into like a 20% spread with leverage. Fancy. Yeah, that would be great. Honestly, we should have that in Frax. I'm going to mention that I'm going to talk to Drake about this week. That sounds cool. Yeah. What and, else? Do, what else we have on the docket? Uh, I think that's it. There's some. There's a bunch of stuff coming up for, uh, for us. You're going to Stable Summit. Oh yeah. Um, big news, everyone. Uh, Flywheel is going to Stable Summit. Stable Summit is a two day conference in Paris during uh, right before ETC week. Flywheel is an official media partner. Very exciting. Um, I may or may not be uh, speaking on a panel, so keep your eye out on that. Um, but yeah, no, I, Paris is great that time of year. There's always a ton of developer action, builder action. Um, really excited to be a part of it. Curve, Liquidity, um, and potentially Frax will be there. The Fly will, will definitely be there. So excited for that. Um, we finished the first month of Frax, of, uh, Frax Education Incentives. Thank you for all who participated. Month two has started, so make sure you go down below. And if you're a threader, writer, infographer, or a dashboard creator, anybody in between, you have the chance to win and earn some FXS, so make sure you go down below uh, to participate in that. Um, we are in the process of planning Frax Build, uh, which is the Frax Hackathon. Uh, just got done with uh, figuring out all the tracks and suggested ideas. Now it's just planning it out, so... Expect that announcement about an official announcement, maybe in like a week, week and a half, once we get everything prepared there. And um, yeah, a lot of build, a lot of building behind the scenes. Everyone, not everything is a, uh, you know, the token doesn't say all, um, but there's a lot happening. So Nadi uh, Nader actually posted some ideas for the hackathon inside mm -hmm. the thread, inside the FIP two eighteen thread. Yeah. So, so some some alpha. His idea was for Fraxeth call put options, also a F Frax vault, um, which is uh, going to lend into Fraxland pairs based on voted allocation distribution, uh, and then a Fraxland notification system, a bribe AMO, a Fraxeth Frax TVL based universal multi chain incentivizing solution. Uh, a cow swap solver that routes everything via Frax, Frax ETH, and uh, a Frax ETH, stake Frax ETH onboarding affiliation program, which I, I think we had been talking about a little bit, and then a uh, better pegged liquid VE token. So for fractures and FPIS. Exciting stuff. Yeah. So there's going to be a ton of stuff coming out of the hackathon. I'm super excited. If you're a builder, this is your chance. There's going to be office hours, workshops. You can. Uh, uh, directly interact with the Frax team and then some. It'll be like the Telegram chat, but in real life, but I'm with the uh, video. So exciting stuff coming ahead. Yeah. Very excited. So uh, I think that's it for this week. I don't have anything else. No, no, but uh, that's it for uh, this week in Frax. Uh, tune in next week for more alpha and goodies. If you <laughs> want to make sure you get that right to your inbox make sure you go to flywheeloutput.com subscribe to us make sure you hit that bell button subscribe leave us a comment let us know what you think give us a like make sure you follow us on twitter at flywheel DeFi. we got a shiny new logo for you and uh we got some other special things coming your way uh make sure you join our telegram group at flywheel DeFi. you can follow me on tele on twitter at DeFi day 22 and you can find me at traders underscore insight and we'll see you next week peace there we go.